All right, so we're gonna replace this muffler. It's got a few holes in it, but we're not gonna throw it out. We're gonna save it. Yep, so Lance. So Lance might be able to repurpose it, do a little welding on it and have a pretty good other. It's just, I think just putting a new skin on it, it'd be easier than, they're, they're not real cheap and they're not real easy to get. Um, what'd you pay for your new one? What's that? Do you remember what you paid for your new one? Uh, I want to say it was around two or three hundred bucks. Yeah. So if we can put a hundred dollars into it and get ten years out of it. Uh, well, we got it out. We got that piece off. I'll never see another one of those. <laughs> Brand new old stock. Some MCI guys jealous right now seeing that. That's probably your number to look for on eBay if you're ever trying to find one. Is that? I assume that's the muffler part number that is no longer made, but maybe somebody can find that on eBay or something. We replaced this intake boot. It was torn and coming apart. Got a little bit of dirty air going there, so we, we was able to locate a new one. We got those replaced. This is gonna be loud, straight piped. Right there. <laughs> it's raining, you got that hurricane thing. a new exhaust pipe just uh, we ordered three feet of flex hose five inch flex hose that we're going to run down out of there if there's a temporary coming out he's able to get the new clamp so i don't have to mickey mouse around this clamp broke on there it rusted and we don't want to just use regular hanging strap or anything like that where he can get the real clamp um so we're just going to put a piece of flex hose on there to get him home straight piped and then he'll put his new muffler on his alternator is not charging when i had it open yesterday I stuck a meter on the, the cable on the back, the positive cable on the back of the alternator up there. You can't see it right now, but it's behind that belt of death. And uh, there, it wasn't getting 12 volts, so that's not connected directly to the battery. So I need to figure out why. Um, I didn't want to get up there with a power probe and test the alternator reaching around the back side of that belt while it was spinning. So I found where that goes to. There's a solenoid that it goes to. It's a 24 volt constant duty solenoid. It's not working. It's getting voltage, but it's not completing the circuit from one side to the other. The alternator is charging. It's just not connected to the battery because there's a, a constant duty solenoid interrupting between the two. So we just got to get a new solenoid for that. And then his 12 volt system will be charging off the alternator going down the road. That's a crappy day. <laughs> when it breaks off in there. I got a tool for that. Let's hope it works. So this tool, you pound it on there and it's like a extractor kind of thing and hopefully it'll work. The hard part is always getting it back out of this tool when it does come off.
Nice. <laughs> You're living right. <laughs> now, like I said, obviously it didn't go on straight because it had bent, but. Last time it took me like three hours to get that out of there. <laughs> it doesn't, you don't have a whole lot of access from the backside, so. But, technically I don't, until I need the tool next time, it doesn't have to come out. <laughs> I was lucky. Of course, it's still raining again. Uh, we've got this leaf spring about ready to come off, so the the differential is supported on some big blocking down there. It's resting on it, and then there's some safety blocks there, and the the body is jacked up as well on the on there. The leaf spring is loose. The tension is off of it. We have the bolts on the bottom loose. I'm just getting ready to go after the shackle on here. Once the shackle's off, I'll be able to drop it down. We're getting real close to having this off here and we're only maybe an hour into it. So it's going pretty good. The old one's mostly out. <laughs> Nothing holding it in there, but gravity, right? <laughs> just, so. just hooked on the one end. All right. Guess who's out of breath? <laughs> Both of us, <laughs> not just one. So we managed to move the one leaf spring about eight feet, I would say, right? Yeah. Ten feet. <laughs> so now we're going to move the other one back, but I got a piece of plywood that we're going to put down so that everything gets a little easier than moving it in the chert. And we actually have a little break from the rain right now, so we're going to take advantage of this. If we don't get it all the way on today, I think my neighbor can come over and help me tomorrow. Um, that would be nice. We'll see. I always got his comeback medic. Combat medic hat on, which he used today when I split my forehead open and <laughs> bled all over the place. And he butterflied me up. I'm gonna look like Frankenstein for my daughter's wedding next weekend. I'm not very happy about that. <laughs> but he did good. We got our leaf spring. It is, I still gotta tighten some stuff up, but it's in. Everything's in place, lined up. The hard part is done. That was, that's kind of a tough job out here. And the splitting my forehead was the last bolt that I was tightening for the leaf spring on the top when it busted my head open. And I was literally like, that was it. That was my last little oomph and I was done. Slipped off, the wrench slipped off and just nailed me right in the forehead. 